Hi there everybody and welcome back! In this video tutorial I'm going to take you through some features of an electrochemical series. If you do find this video helpful I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and then consider subscribing to stay updated. So what we have here is a little snapshot of an electrochemical series. I've got a list of half equations, all written in the reduction direction, which means the electrons are reactants, and each half equation has equilibrium arrows, which I'll come back to later. Next to each half equation, I have a list of their standard electrode potentials, which is defined as the electromotive force, or the voltage, measured when a half cell is connected to the standard hydrogen electrode, or the standard hydrogen half cell. For standard conditions, this must be at 298 Kelvin, 100 kilopascals, and all solution concentrations must be 1 mole per decimeter cubed. So what can I learn from these standard electrode potential values? Well, first off, they come from the comparison of each of our half equation equilibrium to that of the hydrogen half equation equilibrium in the standard hydrogen half cell. The sign and magnitude of the electrode potential tells us if our position of equilibrium is more to the right hand side or more to the left hand side with respect to the hydrogen equilibrium. Now, the more negative standard electrode potential half equations have a position further to the left hand side, and the more positive standard electrode potential half equations have a position further to the right hand side. What I can then add to this is that the more negative standard electrode potential half equations have got a greater tendency to lose electrons and undergo oxidation, which would be a shift of their position of equilibrium to the left, and the more positive standard electrode potential half equations have got a greater tendency to gain electrons and undergo reduction, which would see their position of equilibrium shift to the right hand side. Another use of the standard electrode potential values is helping me decipher which is my strongest oxidizing agent and which is my strongest reducing agent in my little snapshot of this electrochemical series. The conventional way of writing all of these half equations is in the reduction direction but with equilibrium arrows which means everything on the left can be seen accepting electrons, which means they are all demonstrating their ability to be oxidizing agents, because an oxidizing agent is an electron acceptor. Everything on the right hand side is demonstrating its ability to donate electrons, which means everything on the right hand side is an example of a reducing agent, because a reducing agent is an electron donor. So, now I know where my oxidizing agents are and my reducing agents are, which is my most powerful of each? Well, the most powerful reducing agent is zinc, and the most powerful oxidizing agent is the iron 3 ion. So why is the zinc the most powerful reducing agent? Because the standard electrode potential of the zinc half equation is the most negative. And so that tells me that the zinc has got the greatest tendency to donate electrons than anything else. The iron 3 ion is the most powerful oxidizing agent because it's got the most positive standard electrode potential, which tells me it's the most powerful electron acceptor in my electrochemical series. So the final skill I want to cover with you is how I can use an electrochemical series to determine the overall redox reaction for an electrochemical cell or to determine if a reaction is feasible in the direction it has been written. And to do this, I'm going to need to select two half equations from my electrochemical series. Here you can see I've put an asterisk next to the nickel and iodine half equations. Now the nickel half equation has a more negative electrode potential than the iodine one. And so that means when I combine these two together, the nickel equilibrium is going to shift to the left hand side and the nickel gets oxidized to nickel 2 plus. 
the iodine equilibrium will shift to the right hand side and the iodine gets reduced to iodide ions. So that means the nickel goes from 0 to plus 2 and the iodine goes from 0 to minus 1. So I have an oxidation and a reduction, which means I can write a redox reaction. So by using the electrochemical series and the standard electrode potential values, I've determined that my reactants in the overall equation for that redox reaction would be nickel and iodine. And when I write the reaction in this direction, I've written it in its feasible direction. If I want to back this up, there is a supplementary calculation. The redox reaction for our cell can have a quantity calculated for it called the standard cell potential. Now, I like to write this calculation as reduction minus oxidation, but lots of people write it different ways, such as cathode minus anode or positive electrode minus negative electrode. There's lots of ways of doing this. It's effectively the difference between the two standard electrode potentials of the half equations we are using from the electrochemical series. Here, for example, it's the iodine electrode potential minus the nickel electrode potential. The answer comes out as positive 0.79 volts. And the fact that that value is a positive number tells me that this reaction is written in the feasible direction with the correct component getting oxidized and the other correct component getting reduced. To find the cell potential in a lab, I would set up a cell apparatus using nickel and iodine half cells and the voltmeter would read positive 0.79 volts. So that's it for my little electrochemical series tutorial. If you found this video helpful, I really would appreciate it if you could let YouTube know I still exist by leaving this video a like. And if you want to follow this video up with any other physical chemistry tutorials, there are some links on screen now for you. Until next time, happy revising.